Hello, welcome to AP Sources Simplified. Today we are looking at the National Security Council document 68. This important document would outline U.S. foreign policy during the Cold War with the Soviet Union. It was formulated by both the State Department and Department of Defense and presented to President Truman in April 1950. Before getting into the document, let's take a look at the context. When World War II came to an end in 1945, two countries on the victorious side emerged as global powers, which were the United States and Soviet Union. These two poles of power also represented two different ideologies, with democracy and capitalism being the United States and communism with the Soviet Union. While they got along to defeat the Axis powers in World War II, relations quickly became frosty and suspicious by the end of the war and immediately after. By 1950, confrontation and conflict between the two powers seemed imminent. A series of international incidents led the two emerging superpowers to the brink of war. One of them was a dispute over the capital city of Berlin, which lied within the occupied zone of the Soviet Union. But the city itself was divided up between the U.S. and its allies and the Soviet Union. The Soviets blockaded the city for a time, and the U.S. ran supply airlifts to keep their part of the city from falling into Soviet hands. For a short period of time, the U.S. had a trump card in being the only country with nuclear weapons. However, the Soviet Union developed and successfully tested their own in 1949. Then in 1950, war broke out in the Korean Peninsula between South Korea, backed by U.S.-led United Nations forces, and North Korea, supported by Communist China, with Chinese, Chinese soldiers on the ground and supported diplomatically and strategically by the Soviet Union. World War III between the U.S. and the Soviet Union seemed near. The United States State Department and Department of Defense officials recognized the need for a coherent strategy to confront the Soviet Union. This would lead to the National Security Council document number 68, which would hold a great influence over the military and foreign policy of the United States during the Cold War. Now looking at the key points of NSC 68, the document discusses several different foreign policy routes and it clearly rejects any return to isolationism and promotes an active U.S. foreign policy in support of the recently created North Atlantic Treaty Organization, aka NATO, which is a mutual defense agreement between the U.S. and allies, and also support all allies around the globe, which would be anyone who is fending off communism internally or externally. The document characterizes the Soviet Union as a menace, and it seeks to dominate the world, which puts the United States squarely in the position of needing to contain communism and even push back against it. In order to do this, the U.S. needs to increase military spending in both conventional forces and nuclear weapons, while also supporting allies with milita military aid. A part of the nuclear strategy was to develop the next generation of nuclear weapons. At the time, it was called the super. The first nuclear weapons that were developed and dropped on Japan were fission weapons, while the theorized super bomb, a fission uh, weapon, would only be the trigger for the much greater in power hydrogen fusion nuclear weapon. While the report advocated this increase in military spending and new nuclear weapons, it also ruled out a preventative or surprise nuclear attack on the Soviet Union. There were two main reasons for this. First, it would be viewed by the American public as immoral to launch a surprise attack that would instantly kill millions of civilians. And second, the Soviet Union's Red Army would immediately invade and overtake our allies in Western Europe. Let's take a quick look at the intentions of NSC 68. The point of view of, is of the more hawkish advisors of President Truman's administration. Its intended audience is President Truman and senior civilian and military government officials. The purpose is to create a coherent strategy to confront the Soviet Union and advocate for an increase in defense spending and measures in both the U.S. and for its allies. Those who want a more hawkish and confrontational foreign policy would agree with NSC 68. Some of Truman's advisors did disagree with the document, both in its characterization of the Soviet Union, as some saw the Soviet Union as only wanting to consolidate regional power and was not aiming to dominate the world. Some worried about massive increases in defense spending, which would be higher taxes and possibly cutting of other governmental priorities. Finally, let's take a look at the legacy of the document. At first, Truman did not care for it. 
However, both domestic and foreign pressures built up on Truman, including the Red Scare in the United States, in which, led by Senator Joseph McCarthy, publicly went after suspected communists, both civilian and military, and the Korean War, in which the U.S. was now confronting communism on the battlefield. These led Truman to adopt the document and made it a part of his Truman Doctrine of Foreign Policy. The document would go on to be a blueprint for foreign policy for all U.S. presidents during the Cold War, which lasted several decades. Okay, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please click that like button, share with your friends, and subscribe to the channel for more analysis of key primary sources.